Hey there, Dalek Khan. It's a game changer here. So first of all, eighty-five forty-one, very very respectable. So absolutely fantastic there, brother. Um, so uh, so far so good. So let's have a little bit of a scout. So here we are at Dalek Khan Towers. Um, so uh, observations, I would. Excuse my fucking dog, Jesus Christ. Um, so your observations, I would say, is the base is quite large, which does give you a slight um, possible disadvantage from a core point of view, which I'll cover in a moment. And also your spawn zones uh, aren't quite pushing people uh, you know, out as far as you could. So you could maybe have a little look at space in a couple of these um, you know, small buildings out. Um, two and a half squares is the key. Um, so if you look here where you've got three quite close together, they could be spread out um, two and a half t uh, squares between each one and really push these uh, zones back as that does make uh, obviously a fob attack a little bit more um, distant, uh, let's say, um, you know, and it, it does obviously cause issues. Now, if you look at your um, spawn zone for that uh, particular um, peacemaker, just picking that at random, you can almost literally spawn and roll a fraction under it, and that one's taken out of the equation because you're already in its in its dead zone. Um, so that's obviously a couple of things you need to watch out for. Yes, you'd have overlap from that one. I do get that. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's not impossible, for example, to take both of those two out of the equation. If I put a tank here, then what would happen is those two peacemakers would lock onto it. Uh, meanwhile, I could then start my attack uh, from a different location or maybe start from here. Uh, and then obviously hammer has a shit out of your um, helipad and things along that sort of line. Because I'm not really going to be affected by the uh, the SAM if I'm ground, am I? Um, so that that's the danger sometimes of a large base. What then happens is obviously if I attack this side, this side has absolutely no idea I'm there. You know what I mean? Because the distance in the base is, is potentially too great. So what I would look to do, my friend, I would possibly move non-essential things out of this uh, this base. So do you need to have um, oil factories and uh, metal factories inside the perimeter walls? I would personally argue not. Um, so I would bring them outside the walls, which will obviously help with the spawn zone. Um, do you need the um, power plant inside the walls? Again, I would argue not. Same with obviously the um, the global ops and things along that sort of line. Um, you know, so I would I would take all the non-essential things that are currently inside the wall out of the wall, bring your walls in potentially more to make a much tighter base. And what that will do, it will condense the firepower and give you far far better overlap. So, for example, this uh, peacemaker here. Again, I could kind of roll underneath. Um, I mean, there could potentially be a sweet spot where you could almost... Well, I think you've covered it. Uh, but, you know, there is sometimes a danger where you can literally get underneath, uh, you know, peacemakers and things along that sort of line if you if you don't plan them um, quite well. I suspect you've put, put a little bit of thought into this and it's probably one of those bases that, that will be harder than it looks. Um, you know, so obviously it's all positive, really. Um, mine placement, I'd maybe again have a little bit of a tweak of. Um, you know, a lot of people now are running around the outside with uh, obviously these uh, light vehicles. Um, so maybe where the uh, the mines uh, are situated could be uh, an advantage um, or an opportunity, I should say. Um, War factory can't be certain exactly what you've got in there, but obviously some sort of tank format would be uh, good. I'd also be suggesting. Panzers and anti-air would be excellent and good backup for your uh, flak. Your flak, obviously, going forward can be uh, level uh, three, and that will be obviously better still. Um, I mean, obviously, I know you CC nine, so you know maybe I'm thinking, you know, CC ten thought. So forgive us if I'm wrong on that one. Um, so yeah, some good positives in there, bro. Um, like in the um, the Mi twenty eight that you've got in defence. Uh, that's that's a nice little touch. Um, where is your barracks? Uh, snipers. So again, nice little touch for anti air and things along that sort of line. So overall, some really really good stuff. Just be mindful though about uh, placement. So again, not impossible to roll underneath that one. Uh, I know that will bring you into contact with that one. So again, you're probably you're you're either fortunate that you're setting traps 
or you've put deliberate thought into it. But I mean, there's there's still things that you can maybe just have a look at. But I, overall, the biggest thing I would suggest that you do, my friend, is really take the size of the base down a bit. You know, the core where obviously all your firepower is, um, and I would potentially. I say bring uh, turrets closer together so there's even better overlap and there's no danger that you're attacking from one side while the other side's completely oblivious. Uh, that's possibly how I would uh, look at it. Uh, give us a bit of feedback on what you think, bro, because if you're spotting someone, I'm not. If, uh, if obviously your experience, you know, if this is, for example, the perfect GR beating base, for example, if that was kind of your thought pro process, why everything's uh, the way it is, then obviously give, uh, give us feedback, because I always reserve the right to be wrong, but that's just my observation as a, as a keen game player. All right, bro, thank you.